Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 183. As you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to read the problem to you once I have read it. I would like you to try this problem on your own. Pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and once you have done so, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Okay? I'll first read the problem, as I said, just in the event that you have trouble with my handwriting. And then I'll give you an unobstructed view for a few seconds. Here we go. It says, I invested equal amounts of money in two different savings accounts. I invested equal amount of money. It's very important that we pay attention in two different accounts. One, we are, we are told, paid 6%. One paid 6% and in this account I earned $100 more than the $100 more in interest than the actual amount of money invested. For example, if I invested $300, it turned out that I earned $400 in interest. I must have kept it for a very long time. If I invested $900 in the account, the amount of interest that I ended up earning in that account is actually $1,000, $100 more. One paid 6% and in that account I earned $100 more in interest than the actual amount of money, actual amount of money that I invested. The second account, the second one paid only 3%. Second one paid only 3%, half as much as the first one. 6.6%, this is 3%. The amount of interest that I earned in this account was actually $275 less, $275 less than the amount of money invested, than the amount of money it, the, amount of money, the amount of interest, one more time, the amount of interest that I earned was $275 less than the amount of money invested. That's it, the amount of money invested, that's the end of the sentence. Money was kept in this account, we further told, the money was kept in this account not for the same time period as this, this account, but for a different time period. Money was kept in this account for three quarters of the time period. Three quarters of the time period. For example, if the money was kept in, account, in this account for 12 years, then the money was kept in this account for only nine years. If the money was kept in this account for 40 years, the money was kept in this account for only 30 years. Three quarters of the amount of time that the first account was. One more time, the money was kept in this account for three quarters of the amount of time that the first account was. The question is very straightforward. The question is, what did I invest? What was the amount of money that I invest, invested in each of these accounts? As I said, I'll give you five seconds now for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Pause it, solve it yourself, and then we'll do it together. All right, let's get going. Before we actually start solving the problem, we need to understand the basic concept here. The basic concept of how to express the amount of money that one earns for a given amount of investment and for a given amount of time period, for a given amount of interest. Let's find out. Shall we, for example, we know we're getting 6% in this one. We know we're getting 6%. 6% means 6 over 100. So how much do I earn if I were to invest $100? If I were to invest $100 for one year, $100 invested for one year, this is the amount of dollars, this is the time in year, time period in year. If I invest $100 for one year, as you can see, hundreds are going to cancel out and I'm going to earn $6. $6. I'm going to end up earning $6. If I invest, on the other hand, instead of $100, if I invest $300, $300, I'm going to earn 6% of $300, I'm going to earn three times as much interest on $300 as I did on $100 for in one year. If I invest $300 at 6%, not for one year, but for seven years, then of course I'm going to earn seven times as much. So the general uh, expression that we're going to get out of it is that this is given to us. This is 6%. This is, this is not an unknown. This is a known quantity. So this stays the same, 6 over 100. What we don't know is the amount that we are invested, uh, amount that we are investing. We do not know that. Let's call it D, D for dollar. That's the unknown. D dollars we're going to invest. Second thing we do not know is for how many time periods. We do not know for how many time periods, but it is going to be expressed in years. It says, I invested equal amount of money in two different savings accounts. One paid 6%, I earned $100 more in interest than the actual amount of money invested. But for how long? We do not know that. Let's call it T. T for the time period. So T represents the number of time periods, number of time periods expressed in years. 
this is how this is how we'll get amount amount of interest that we earned in the first account. This is how we'll get this is how we'll arrive at the amount of interest that is earned in the first account. And we know that this amount is actually 100 more than the money actually invested. This is more than 100 dollars more than the amount of money that was actually invested. Just give me a second. Very good. Let's carry on. We need the we need the space on the we need the room, so we're gonna use the top. So the money that we the the amount of interest that we're earning on the first account is right here. Six over one hundred. That's that represents a six percent for the amount that we invested, which was D dollars for T years. And this is what we earn. I'm not gonna write down the units because otherwise it gets it gets very awful. This is it. You have to know the units. T D dollars. T is the time period. This is how much I'm gonna earn. And this amount is actually $100 more than the actual amount that I invested. The actual amount that I invest is D. So if I were to take away 100 from it, because this is $100 more than the amount that I invested, if I take away 100 from it, that will give me the amount that I invested. That's the first equation. Similarly, we get the second equation. Now we'll work on the second equation. Again, what's the interest rate? The interest rate right here is 3%. It's 3%, 3 over 100 represents 3%. How much did we invest? The same amount of money we are told, we invest the same amount of money. For how long? It says right here, for three quarters of the amount of time. For three quarters of the amount of time. So if this one was invested for T, T units of time, T years, then this is going to be three quarters of T. And what do we know? I'm going to erase all of this now. And what do we know about all of this thing? We know that this amount that we just arrived at is 275 less than the money that I invested. This amount is 275 less. Than the money that I invested. Well, if it's 275 less, then how can I justify putting an equal sign? How can I put it justify putting an equal sign if it's 275 less? This amount is 275 less than the amount that was invested. There are two choices we have. Either we can add 275 to this amount, and now they are equal to each other, or the amount of money that was invested, we can subtract 275 from it, and now they are equal to each other. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to stick with the first option right here, plus 275. And these two amounts are equal. Well, if these two amounts are equal, then that in turn implies, if these two amounts are equal, then that in turn implies that this expression that we see, the left hand side that we see here, 6 over 100 times D times T minus 100 must equal 3 over 100, 3 over 100 times D times three quarters T plus 275. And that's the equation that we have to work with and we'll see what happens, okay? We'll see what happens with it. Well, first thing we notice is that the denominators are all different. Here we have a denominator of 100. Here we have a denominator. Why don't we first take care of this thing? Let's bring this 100 over there. Let's bring this 100 over there. I'm going to bring so add 100 to both sides. And as, as by doing so, this is going to drop out, and this is going to become 375. Technically speaking, I should have done it in a se one separate step, but I'm just being lazy. So this is gone. I'm just being lazy because I'm trying to save room. This is gone. Here we have a denominator of 100. Here, this guy, okay, this is the, this is the guy. This is the whole thing. Here we have a denominator of 400, and here we have a denominator of 1. All, they're all different denominators. It will help us if we can make all the denominators the same. We can make this denominator of 100 into 400 by multiplying top and bottom by 4. We, this one already has a denominator of 400. This one has a denom denominator of 1. Let's multiply top and bottom by 400. 1. You with me so far? Okay. Let's, let's, work, let's, let's begin our process. 6 times 4 is 24. And D times T is just going to be DT. And that has to equal, that has to equal this amount, 3 times 3, which is 9, and D times T, D times T is DT. And of course, the denominator no longer plays any role because they have the whole same denominators. So it's 375 plus 375 times 400. That's what that follows. From this follows this. 
subtract 9 dt from both sides. If we bring the 9 to here, 24 minus 9, 24 minus 24 minus 10 would have been 20, 14, so it's going to be 15. 15 dt equals 375 times 400, which I'm going to write as 4 times 100. 4 times 100, and you will see in a second why. You will see in a second why, because it will make it easier for us to get rid of this 15. It will make it easier to get rid of this 15. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 5. We could have divided this number. We could have very easily have divided this number by 5. This number is the multiple of 5. But it's easier to divide 100 by 5, which is why I wrote 400 as 4 times 100. So if you divide this by 5, the 15 is going to become 3 and 100 is going to become 20. Now we have a 3 here and this is a 375. Is that a multiple of 3? The answer is yes. We have learned it long time ago before. We learned long time ago in our basic math series how to figure out if the number is divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, all of those things. And we know a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. If the sum of the digits of a given number is divisible by 3, the number itself must be divisible by 3. And here, of course, 3 is divisible by 3. So all we have to worry about is 7 and a 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. And 12 is divisible by 3. Therefore, 375 is divisible by 3. Let's divide both sides by 3. If we divide both sides by 3, 3 is going to drop out. How many 3's does 3 have? 3 has 1 3. 3 has 1 3. How many 3's does 7 have? 7 has 2 3's. 7 has 2 3's. After we take away 2 3's are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder 1. Remaining 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 15. And 15 has how many 3's? 15 has 5 3's. That's it. So what we find is that d times t, d, d times t equals 125 times 20, times 20. This is what we extract from all of this. This is what we extract from all of this. What are we going to do with it? Well, it's very simple. We're going to go back and put it in one of the equations here. We can either put it in this equation or that equation. Makes no difference. Makes no difference. We have two, two equations here. We're going to substitute the value of... I'm going to use up my, pick up my red marker here. We're going to substitute the value of d times t that we found here. We're going to substitute that value here and solve for d. That's what it is. Very simple. Let's do it together, shall we? I'm going to stick with the first equation only because... not only because it's the first one written there, but also it's, this is easier to work with than this guy. This guy is more nasty. Let's erase this guy and watch what happens. Okay, watch what happens. D times T equals 125 times 20. 125 times 20. Let's put it in here. 6 over 100 times D times V, which is 125 times 20 minus 100 equals D. Of course, that's what we were looking for, weren't we? We were looking for... The question was, how much did I invest? I invested this much money. I invested D dollars in each of the two accounts, and that's what we're solving for. The rest is very, very simple. Let's hope and pray to God that it works out, because as I'm looking at my notes here, it looks very different than this guy. We'll find out in a second. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. If you divide top and bottom by 25, this 125 becomes 5. 100 is going to become 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. 4 is going to drop out, and 20 is going to become 5. And we get 25. 25 times 6. 25 times 6 is... 25 times 6 is 150. 150 times 100 equals D, and that is not the right answer. I did something wrong. Now I have to go back and find the mistake. Lost it. I knew I was doing something wrong because, as I said, that's not what I had in my notes. 375 times 400 divided by 15. Oh, the mistake somewhere, happened somewhere here. Divide both sides by 5, 15 becomes 3 and 100 becomes 20. Divide both sides by 3, 3 has... Oh, blast it. Oh, blast it. I can't believe it. I left out this 4. I left out this 4. There's a 4 here. We have the 125 and we have the 20, but I left out this 4. I can't believe it. Damn it. Damn it. Shit. It's times 4. We need a times 4 here. There has to be 125 times 20 times 4. I'm going to squeeze it in here. Times 4. Times 4. 
and now it will be the right answer. I made a mistake here. And how would we have known that this answer that we are arriving at is, is the wrong answer? We would have known it. We would have known it. We would have realized it right away when we have done our verification, which we always do. Verif when, we, when we do the verification, we would have realized that uh, things are not working out. Things are not working out because that, uh, the pieces of puzzle have to fit. So again, so I left out times 4, that's all it is. Everything else is the same. So instead of 150, is 150 times 4. Times 4. This 4 here, I left it out, which makes sense now. 4 times 150 is 600. 600 minus 100 is 500. The amount of money that I invested was $500 in each of the two accounts. And now you will see, now you will see that when we do the verification, verification will make sense. With $50, Otherwise, it would have been 150. 150 minus 100 would have been 50, and you would have see, you would see in a second that with 50 dollars it would not work out. With 500 dollars would work out. We need the room for verification. I'm going to raise all of this thing. So one more time, where did I make a mistake? I made a mistake because I left out this four. I did not. I did not bring this four down. This is 125 times four times 20. 125 times. 20 and times 4. I did not bring this out, bring this down. That's where I made a mistake. So let's do the verification. So what we're claiming is that, what we're claiming is that we are investing $500. We're investing $500 at 6%, at 6%. Well, listen very carefully, okay? Listen very carefully. How much do we earn? How much do we earn? At $500 at 6%, $100, $100 at 6%, $100, $100 at 6% gives $6, doesn't it? If $100 at 6% gives $6, then $500 should give 5 times as much. That's 30. You with me? That's 30. And we know how much, how much interest we earn. We know how much interest we earn because the problem told us that we earn $100 more in interest than the actual amount of money that we invested. We only invested $500, which means we must have earned $600. This is 30. If this is 30, then times 10 for 10 years would be $300. We did not earn, three, we did not earn $300 in interest. We earned $600 in interest, which means we must have invested the money we must have invested the money for 20 years. For 20 years. Now let's see if that works out with the other scenario. In the other scenario also, we invested $500. We invested $500 at 3%. 3% of 500. 3% of 100 is 3. 3% of 500 is 15. And how long did we invest it for? For three quarters of the amount of money. For the three quarters of the amount of time, we were told that in the second scenario, we invested for the three quarters of the amount of time. So the amount of time right here is 20 years. We know we invested in the first account for 20 years. Three quarters of 20 years is 15 years. This is the 15 years. This is this is the uh, this is the amount of interest that you will earn in one year. Fifteen dollars. Five hundred. Five hundred dollars at three percent. Three percent of five hundred is fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars is what we will earn in one year. We invested for 15 years, so it's 15 times 15, which is 225. 225. 225. And how much money did we invest? We invested $500. And how much interest did we earn? We earned $225. That tells us that the amount of interest that we earned, the amount of interest that we earned, $225, the amount of interest we earned, amount of interest, we earned was $275 less than the amount invested. The amount of interest earned, we earned $225. Amount of interest that we earned was $275 less than the amount interested. We invested $500. 500 minus 225 is $275. We earn $275 less in the interest amount than the actual amount of money that we invested, which is exactly what the problem had told us. And it makes sense. With the $50, none of this would have made sense. None, none of this would have made sense. Because with $50, listen carefully, had you invested $50, 
you would have had to keep the account you would have had to keep the money in the account for not 20 years but for 200 years that's a bit too long isn't it that's a bit too long and it wouldn't have worked out with 200 years uh, the amount that we would have invested here uh, 150 years what you would have needed here and uh, and in 150 years 15 times 150, 15 times 150, it would have been very different here. It would, it would not have worked out here. I'm curious as to what, this would have been 200 years and this would have been 150 years. It still be $15 times 150, it would be $2,250, I believe. It would not have worked out. And that's, that's how you would know that uh, the, our answer is wrong. You understand? Bye now.